Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the Iona Athletics Podcast, your source for all the latest news surrounding the Iona Gales. I'm your host, Mike Phillips. We've got a good show for you this week. I'm going to be joined on the phone in just a bit by the head coach of Iona's women's basketball team, Billy Chambers. Coach Chambers called me to talk about the team's trip to Puerto Rico, how the team is doing this season, it's a bunch of good stuff. So stay tuned for that conversation with Coach Chambers. Be sure you're locked in until the end of the podcast for this week's look ahead to the schedule for Iona Athletics. But we'll get it all started with the week that was. And like last week, we had some awards to give out once again this week. And here we go. We'll start this time with the Iona Men's Cross Country Program, which is ranked 15th nationally in the United States Track and Field and Cross Country Association polls. In addition, Five members of the men's and women's cross-country program were named by the U.S. TFCCCA as all-region honorees. Ahab S. El Sandali, Jack O'Leary, and John Millar from the men's team, while Egle Morinete and Jenna Nuttall represented the women. Let's go on to men's soccer. Josh Plimpton was named to College Soccer News' National Team of the Week following his strong performance in the MAC Soccer Playoffs, while Maura Bravo received a spot on Top Draw Soccer's Men's Team of the Week for his two-goal performance in the MAC title game. Finally, we'll go to the volleyball program, who had nine players, nine, named to the MAC all-academic team. Alessandra Brady, Cassandra Patsos, Taylor Cole, Jamie Smith, Tess Connolly, Jessica Pellucci, Alexandra Russo, Carla Johnson, and Julia Stewart. Congratulations to all those Gales for their outstanding academic achievements and achievements on the field. Now let's go into the recap. We will start with Thursday, November 21st. Men's soccer in the first round of the NCAA tournament fell at the defending champion Maryland 4 0. Uh, this game was actually much closer than the final score indicated. It was 1 0 deep into the second half. Gales had a chance to equalize this side. Mockage slipped behind the defense, had a chance, got it past the goalie, but could not sneak it into that left post. Terrapins respond three goals to put the game out of reach. Julian Santucci, busy in net for Iona had six saves on the match. Also on Thursday, November 21st, the women's basketball team lost to Stony Brook in Stony Brook, 59-40. to Morgan Rachu and Juana Chameleon led Iona with nine points apiece. Let's go ahead to Friday, November 22nd. The men's basketball team, day one of the MAC Atlantic Sun Challenge, tops Stetson 60-55. to Tawana Agee had a double-double for the Gales at 15 points, 12 rebounds. He led all scorers in that game. E.J. Crawford, 12 points. Asante Gist, another 11 for the Gales. Men's water polo in the first round of their conference tournament. Lost 13-11 to Brown. The Gales fell behind early. Valiant comeback effort. Cut the deficit to two in the final minutes, but could not get all the way back. Phil Wachowski led the Gales with three goals in the match. Let's go ahead to Saturday, November 23rd. A very busy day in general. But the cross-country program was at the national championships in Terre Haute, Indiana. The women's side saw Egle Morinete finish 24th in the 6K race with a time of 20 minutes and 32.6 seconds, earning herself All-America honors for the second straight year. The men's team, as a team was there, they placed 12th out of 31 teams in the country, and they were the highest finisher in the Northeast region. John Millar was the top finisher for Iona, ran the 10K race in 31 minutes, 12.1 seconds, and earned All-American honors as well. So great showing by the Gales out in Indiana. The men's cross-country program also sent a team to the IC4A championships. They finished fourth among 16 teams at Van Cortlandt Park. Joshua D'Souza was the second-place finisher individual race, finishing the five-mile course in 24 minutes and 59.9 seconds. The swimming program is also in action on Saturday. They swept a dual meet at Southern Connecticut State. The women's team won 191 to 178. 191 to 78, excuse me. While the men won 176 to 93. 16 different gales won individual events, which is awesome. Five swimmers claimed two different wins on the day. Those swimmers were Louisa Da Silveria, Kate Flynn, Jackson Madonia, Aiden Holbrook, and Jalen Ramjohn, each with a pair of wins for Iona at the meet. Men's water polo lost the fifth place game of their conference tournament to MIT 16 to 6. Herman Rodriguez, Lester Machado each had two goals for Iona in the defeat. Men's basketball swept the MAC A Sun Challenge with a blowout 75-52 win over Kennesaw State on Saturday. 
Tawan AG had another double-double, 20 points, 10 rebounds. He took home the challenges, MVP honors. While EJ Crawford, Dylan Van Eyck, and Isaiah Ross all scored in double figures for Iona. And that will do it for this week in Iona Athletics. Up next, our interview with Coach Chambers right after this. All right, we are back here on the Iona Athletics Podcast. Joining us on the phone this week is the head coach of the Iona Women's Basketball Program. Coach Billy Chambers is on the phone with us now. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. So I'm going to start off with, this is a question I also asked uh, Ricky Johns last week when he called into the podcast. I know everybody who like is really into basketball, they just have this love of the game and love being around basketball. So what's that one thing you love the most about the game of basketball? Oh, man. <laughs> I think one thing. There's so many things. Um, I guess I would say the the opportunity just to kind of express your personality, you know, to kind of get outside of your shell. I was a shy kid growing up. I don't think when my parents took me out to play basketball, I don't think I even wanted to be there. I think I tried to hide in the corner to avoid it. Um, but it just kind of gave me an opportunity to come outside of my shell and to express that personality, to find support around me, to enjoy just the competition, the, the the teammates, the building of that strong support system. And I think to see young women today have that opportunity to do that and, and to build their support system and to grow together and to kind of grow into who they are, that's the, the fun part for me. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. And is that something that you find you can translate into your coaching today as you work with your team and try and like bring that out of them? Sure. I mean, I think that that kind of motivates me of trying to get them to step outside of their comfort zone a little bit to be relationship based in in my interaction with them and to let them know that they can come to me for anything and to feel confident in having conversations and to watch them grow into young women and find their voice and their place in this world to you know to be able to do that on a court every day and to hit adversity and and find your resilience and find your fight and to learn that you can accomplish things more than you thought you ever could through basketball I think that helps me in in my teaching and me in me mentoring them and me trying to support them and motivate them to just to, to grow and to become who they want to be. Yeah, I mean, I've, I'll admit, I, the first time I really saw the team up close really was last year. I know last year, it was, a, it was a tough year, but at the end, you guys made some big strides down the stretch, pulled up in the MAC tournament. How do you feel the momentum from that end of the year sort of carry forward into this season? Sure, yeah. Last year was, it was obviously tough. You know, we had a brand new roster, I think, you know, almost everybody at that point was new. We had a few returners, but mo- many of them had set out due to injury. Um, so when you're teaching every day and every single person on your roster is learning that for the first time, it's a little bit tough. Um, but they showed some resilience and fight and battled down the stretch and, you know, just came together and started to understand that, you know, once they understood how to play on this level and how to come together to use their talents as a, as a whole, that they could be successful. So, you know, postseason was uh, a really good postseason. I think them learning and having a little bit of a taste of success towards the end helped them realize how much harder they wanted to work to be successful at this level. Um, summer was really competitive. We added a, a few new strong faces to, to go with the cast of characters from last year. And, you know, they've just been really getting after it and, and starting to believe that they can take that next step, that they can compete at this level, um, and that they should expect to win when they walk out on the floor, not just to be resilient and gritty and fight. Yeah, I've seen that fight a lot this year. I mean, we saw the big comeback in the opener against Winthrop. We saw the big fight back in the home opener against Duquesne. Like, how encouraging is it as a coach to see, like, you know, that, you know, like, we're never out of a game. We will fight and get back in this game as a team. Sure, that's super encouraging, you know, to know that you will battle through anything, that you can come together and, and, and fight back, and that you have people who will rely on each other and have each other's backs. And, you know, you had different people step up in each game. Um, which was nice for us to see. We've shifted our lineup around a little bit um, to try to figure out what the, the best pieces are together and who performs the best together. But to know that you have a group that is just determined to battle from beginning to end is great. Obviously, as a coach, you'd like to see us start off games a little bit better and not position us to have to get down. But to learn that lesson early about our team is, is, is exciting, is, is promising for you know, the next step. Um, and then they're just really unselfish, unselfish kids who just want to go out and battle and, and they want to win. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see, you know, how this plays out this year for this group and to see how they come together and what we can accomplish. 
And I know the men get all the headlines, but people should re- know this is also the 45th year of Iona women's basketball. We celebrated that during homecoming weekend. What was it like to be a part of that anniversary celebration during homecoming and know that you have a significant part in this program's history? Absolutely. That was awesome to see, you know, some of our alum come back and share in the day with us and to, to get on the court. We wanted to give them the opportunity to be some of the first to play on the court. So we were able to get them out there and watch them go up and down and, and our, our players actually were on the, the, the commentating for them and, and cheering for them and, and serving as the officials because we had an off-campus scrimmage the next day. Um, but it was nice to have that, that opportunity to share just in a piece of history with them. That, you know, they, they're the ones who built the foundation. You know, we'll have a chance to do that again in, in February when they come back for the Quinnipiac game to just celebrate the history and the tradition of women's basketball and to just show appreciation and, and, and gratitude for our opportunities that came because of them. Um, so this is a big year, you know, to celebrate 45. It's an exciting year, and it's, I'm just happy to be a part of, you know, everything that Iona Women's Basketball has done and everything here at the college. Yeah, and we're looking ahead to next week. I mean, we're recording this before the Stony Brook game, but next week you guys have a unique trip. You get to go down to Puerto Rico for Thanksgiving to play a couple of games for the Puerto Rico Classic. So what do you hope mm-hmm. the team gets out of that experience down in Puerto Rico for Thanksgiving? Yeah, we wanted to do something fun for, for 45 years of women's basketball, so we thought a, a trip to Puerto Rico would be really cool. Um, we have so many different young women on our roster um, from all over the world, you know, Spain, you know, Lithuania, everywhere here in the country, and many of them have not been to Puerto Rico, so we thought it would be a really cool idea to take them out there, play two tough games um, against a, a tough Washington team who had a, a similar run in their conference tournament last year and started putting the pieces together and a, a tough Towson team who made the NCAA tournament and, and really was playing well down the stretch at the end of the year. Um, I think, you know, having that opportunity to, to separate and, and, and just spend some time together away from everything else and have that team bonding time to have some tough competition um, and then also to do some community service uh, while we're out there. Um, uh, Coach Velez Perez from volleyball here has family out there, and we're going to connect with a group out there to do some community service with him, and he's been really helpful for us. So, you know, I think we'll get a lot out of this, out of this trip um, on many different fronts. Um, but, you know, we really want to have an opportunity to con- see our con- uh, women continue to grow, continue to work hard, continue to fight it, and pick up some wins in non-conference that, that build that confidence and, and prepare us for a tough max weight. Sounds like it'll be a very fun trip. Coach, thanks for all the time today. Best of luck this season and safe travels to Puerto Rico in the coming week. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. And there you have it. That's our interview with Iona women's basketball coach, Billy Chambers. For the full interview with Coach Chambers, be sure to check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash IC Gales. Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Thursday, Friday. All right, we are ready to look ahead to the upcoming week in Iona Athletics. And I'll admit, not a ton going on with the Thanksgiving holiday here. In fact, it's all women's basketball. So let's stick with them. We'll go ahead to Thursday, November 28th on Thanksgiving Day. The women's basketball team, as Coach Chambers just mentioned, they'll be taking on Washington in the Puerto Rico Classic. That's the first of two games that the Iona women's basketball program will play down in Puerto Rico. The second will come the following day on Friday, November 29th. Women's basketball, again, in the Puerto Rico Classic. As Coach Chambers just mentioned, they'll be taking on Towson in another non-conference matchup. And that will do it for the upcoming week in Iona Athletics. For more about game times for the Puerto Rico Classic and whatever else you could possibly want to know about Iona Athletics, check out our website, www.icgales.com. You can also follow us on social media. Just search for our social media handle at IC Gales across all major social media platforms. Be sure you're locked in every week. We have brand new episodes of the Athletics Podcast coming out, including one next Monday. Until then, keep fighting the good fight, Gale Nation.